Hi, we're in uh, Peak Goff Wood, my mate's uh, Kitchen Cowboys Food Emporium, and we're just going to be doing a little uh, food pairing with uh, Longitude, Flagstone Longitude, and Pete, nice to see you, mate. Yes, nice one, Bruce. Thank Excellent. you for having me. Oh, pleasure, mate. Always a pleasure. It's a great way to start the week, and, and we've, uh, I've brought in a little something just to make sure that we get the wheels turning, a little bit of Flagstone Longitude. It's 12 o'clock. Must be six o'clock somewhere in the world, then. Huh? <laughs> okay, so I think on the nose, what's great about this wine is that it's got um, a real explosion of red berry fruit. Um, really enticing, wonderful, ripe, red, um, juicy fruit. So you really want to uh, have a sip of it. Nice and clean. There's some spice, a little bit of cloves. Mm. And it's a great way to start the day. It's got, a, it's got a lot of nice plummy fruit, a lot of raspberry, but at the same time, it's fairly full bodied. So it's going to be able to I mean, stand up to some pretty robust food. No, look, I think there's, there's, a, nice, there's a nice richness to it and there's a nice, there's a nice bite to it. And that Shiraz in there is giving some nice sort of meaty texture, which is, I think, exactly what we're going to do. with a nice little steak sandwich, which we're going to throw on the braai um, with a few bits and pieces, some mustard, a little bit of onion marmalade. Um, and some rocket, and I think the various the fruit and the, the acidity of the mustard and the sweetness of the onions really bring out the flavours of the wine, and will sit nicely with a nice this sirloin about eight, eight, eight weeks matured, nice, really meaty, full full body flavour will go well with the wine. Yeah, I think I think um, it definitely is a wine that goes really well with meat. It definitely is a wine that's structured and it's designed to um, to go with uh, hearty fare, uh, of which of course uh, England is famous. Well, we'll start with just a little bit of a simple marinade that we use for the meat. And that's just a, a little dash of, of Worcestershire sauce and some olive oil. Which I think will go really well with, um, I mean, the Worcestershire sauce has got that nice kind of, also that slightly meaty. Well, you've got the, you've got the anchovy essence and the tamarind. So you've got this nice, salty, quite also quite rich, robust sort of flavors that will work quite nicely with the, and then just a little bit of salt and pepper on there. And uh, Pete is, is one of the most celebrated chefs in South Africa, so I feel very privileged to have been able to get him to make a steak sandwich for us today. And uh, hopefully it will give you a little taste, not only of what uh, Flags and Longitude is easily paired with, also the versatility of the wine. I'm standing here on the balcony of a boutique secret little hotel in the Victorian Alfred waterfront. A really isolated, beautiful little spot. And behind me is the, the, the Time Ball Tower which is on the label of the Longitude bottle. And uh, it was really the inspiration for the, the label and for the name of the wine. Uh, it was a, it was a Time Ball Tower was involved in um, really understanding how one can find longitude at sea. And it was a big problem in the 1600s. It was easy to find latitude, but longitude was something that no one could really work out. And in fact, in the early 1700s, the British government gave a, a big prize for anyone who could determine how to accurately tell longitude at sea. It wasn't, it wasn't until 1774 that a, that a clockmaker, a guy called John Harrison, actually invented a chronometer or a time machine that was able to keep accurate time on board. Prior to that, obviously, the problem was that a lot of clocks were, were pendulum uh, driven. And of course, you can't have a pendulum swinging around on the deck of a ship. So around um, all the British colonies, time ball tiles were built because uh, at uh, 12 o'clock every day, the ball gets hoisted up and dropped down again. And the mariners at sea, the ship's captains, would be able to determine whether or not their chronometer was losing time or making time because obviously they were all made out of wood. And in certain uh, conditions, they lost time. And in other conditions, they gained time. And it was a way of keeping accurate time on board ship. And if you've got accurate time on board ship, um, uh, and that is Greenwich Mean Time, no matter how far away from the Greenwich Meridian you got, your time changed in the local place, and that's how you could determine where you are, were. So very simple. Um, and we've, we called our wine Longitude because we originally started here in the waterfront, and this is where our first winery was, um, and we quite like the idea of uh, sort of s somebody from uh, uh, just through his own endeavors and, uh, and sticking at it was able to work out this, this amazing scientific discovery. Um, we also like the fact that Longitude is really the wine that a lot of people come to the Flagstone range through. It's kind of the wayfinder. Uh, and uh, yeah, we like that about the wine. We like that about the name. And um, I hope you'll also enjoy the wine. 
Okay, we want a nice hot fire, some seriously hot coals, because obviously we want it to get nice and charred on the outside. We've cut quite thick 200 gram pieces. Um, and so we'll get a nice char on the outside. We'll keep it nice and moist and pink and medium rare on the inside. I, I, believe, I believe you're not allowed to brine in South Africa without a glass of wine. Yeah, it's, a, it's actually against the law. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that. I mean, I've, yeah. I've seen people go to jail. And yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's really is quite... Uh, you know, and us being law-abiding citizens. Yeah. Cheers, yeah. It's a bit of longitude. Mm. Oh, magnificent. And the nice thing about it is, while it's got a bit of body and a bit of structure, it's not... It's not too heavy that on a nice hot day like today, you could still, still say drinking this out in the sunshine. It's, it, there's enough, there's enough um, elegance to this that doesn't over, there's not one of these heavily chewy wines that, that you need to hunker down in seven feet of snow to drink. <laughs> exactly. This is actually quite nice on a hot summer's day. Well, I think what, what, we, what we've always tried to do at, at Flagstone is to, particularly with our red wines, to make wines that have the body, but also have the elegance. So it's a wine uh, that uh, I think is always going to find um, favor, particularly in a restaurant setting with food. Yeah. People sit down, they want to have a little bit of a glass of wine. There are going to be different tastes and flavors and things going on at the table. Can have can have a sip of it without food, but it can also, it re it'll really complement yeah, some, serious, some seriously um, solid fare. And I think what, uh, the thing about Flagstone is that, and it's, it's, it's something that a lot of people tell me who work in restaurants, that if you manage to get a table to order a bottle of Flagstone, your tip just magically becomes more. Well, I think it's a it's a it's a great it's a great food one. And you, and you say, I think the Malba in it and everything brings a nice a, a nice a nice character to it. And I think you could put this with a lot of food. I mean, look, it's, I think it's going to be great with the steaks. But I think it's a, a an easy food one. It's an easy one to recommend if you're. I think it's the kind of thing that if you were if if people say recommend a wine and you've got four people having four different dishes, um, maybe a little heavier dishes, meat dishes, that kind of stuff, and you, you, you struggle. I think this would be a nice sort of. Um, uh, universal thing that would, would go with dish about everything. Well, I think what, what, what gets at that is the blend. The fact that we've taken three very different varieties, something Cabernet and Shiraz, which are probably South Africa's two signature red grape varieties. And then we've, uh, we've blended it with about 15% of Malbec, which is traditionally from South America. Yeah. But which in South Africa, it's, it's, we've had Malbec in South Africa for almost as long as South America. Really? It's just never been an important grape variety for us. So we have our own specific selections, which really um, suit our climate, suit our soils, and it gives it that incredible jamminess yeah. which, you, which you get, which is not overly jammy, it's not dead fruit, but it, it just gives a wonderful dark fruit character to it, which, uh, which is very yummy, I think. So you've got the structure from the Cabernet, you've got the spice from the Shiraz, and you've got this yummy fruitiness from the Malbec. And that combination allows you to, uh, to yeah. pair the wine with a whole lot of different food. Oh. Well, this, would, this would stand up to a bit of spice, um, a little, a little lamb rog and yosh would go down nicely with this. Um, there's a number of different things you could do. Oh, this uh, would go pretty well with curry, actually. Yeah. Mexican food, bit of Mexican food. You know, not overly hot for, but spicy. Yeah, yeah, lots exactly. of cumin, lots of North African type stuff. You wouldn't go wrong with 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 uh, multiple dishes working with this at the same time. Well, you're the chef, mate. I'm going to have to drink a few more bottles of it just to confirm that that's the case. <laughs> but, you know, in the interest of science, we like to make sure that we get these things Absolutely. right. Absolutely. It's about, it's about replication yes. of, of the scientific uh, beginning. That's well, I mean, you, you know, you have to test these things in the fields. We're all coming up with a theory and smelling and saying this is what it might be nice with. You, you really have to go out there and, and drink lots of mountain, eat lots of meat, drink lots of, this, of the wine. Just, uh, you know. It actually does smell really good. It's lovely. <laughs> But I mean, just with the with yeah, the, no, that's the when you get the smoke, yeah, and, the and you're getting, and you're getting yeah. that coming off the bry. It's it's got it's it's amazing just on the just on the nose. Mm. If it's going to work on the nose with the the aromas that are coming off the food, yeah, certainly. Huh? I'm glad I haven't eaten for about four days. I kind of I kind of full go full went breakfast because I knew we were going to have a bit of a monster steak sandwich for lunch. So I'm, I did the same. Yeah. And what you'll see, what we've done is, with the steak, is traditionally we've taken a sirloin and we've actually cut it half lengthways. Yeah, I know. So what we can do is, we'll give a 200 gram steak that's much thicker. Excellent. Okay, so we've just uh, had a traditional South African braai where we've cooked, cooked some steaks up, so that you know that when you come to Cape Town and visit us, uh, you're also going to be able to enjoy some good food with people like Pete. Perfect, Excellent. Thanks, Bruce. Well, this is our traditional kitchen cowboy steak sandwich. We do this down the old biscuit mill Saturday mornings, and this is a, a bit of a 
signature dish of ours. We start off with a nice toasted bun, a little bit of olive oil, then we get a nice good bit of rocket, nice peppery rockets also. Once again, working with the spiciness that was, element, that was evident in the wine. You could use other lettuces, but the, the nice bite of rocket yeah. just gives it a nice, Absolutely, yeah. gives it a good sharpness. It's a good little fresh tomato. And then we're going to get ourselves a bit of steak and we're just nice and perfect. And then we're just going to finish that off with a touch of Dijon mustard, which we'll put on the lid there. Touch of Dijon. And then this, this onion marmalade or onion chutney, it's just, this is onions, red wine, red wine vinegar and sugar that's been cooked down for a couple of hours. Get a nice sweetness to it, nice sort of sweet savory that once again works perfectly with the, with the combination of the wines. And that is breakfast. Is our, it's our breakfast of champions. We're just going to cut those in half. Cool. Mm. Mm. Dude, we rock. Mm. Cheers. And with the wine. Mm. Well, you've got, you've got the different layers of the sandwich. You've got the pepperiness, you've got the meatiness, you've got the sweetness. And it's picking up the layers in the wine. You're picking up that it's, that it's a blend and you're getting different elements that you wouldn't get from one cultivar. Mm. And, and it, the, the sandwich complements the wine perfectly. So this is how we do it. <clears throat> this is a, a steak sandwich a la South Africa. A nice glass of longitude. And um, I can see the rest of the day looking quite rosy at this stage. Enjoy. Enjoy.